Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us. We are coming to you live from our living room, which is in our home, which is where we have been spending way too much time. And as part of that, tonight, we're going to read a couple of bedtime stories. We thought you might enjoy that. It's part of the Fest Events Stay at Home series. We're all staying home, obviously, because of coronavirus. We want to keep everybody safe and healthy, healthy, but we also want to be happy. So we got to think of creative ways to enjoy our time at home. So tonight, I have a couple of very special guests joining me. And instead of me introduce, I think I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Let's start with the little guy to my left. If you'd be kind enough to tell everybody your name, your favorite food, your favorite color, I think that'll be enough. My name is Thomas. My favorite food is co our corn dogs. And my favorite color is red. All right. I bet you love putting red ketchup on corn dogs then. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, sounds like a wonderful treat. And the larger lad to my right. Sir, if you'd be kind enough to give us your name, let's do your favorite food. But instead of favorite color, let's go with your favorite movie. Um, hello. I'm, my name is Raleigh. And my favorite food is probably hamburgers. And my favorite movie is one of the Star Wars movies. I, I love them all, but probably my favorite is The Fallen Jedi. The Fallen Jedi. We saw that together, didn't we, guys? Yep. It's a great one. In fact, I think we've seen them all together. Um, all right, now it's my turn. My name is Jason. I am the Director of Development with Fest Events. Uh, Norfolk Fest Events Limited is a 501c3. We are located in Norfolk. We put on events and festivals at Town Point Park and Ocean View Beach Park. Um, I mentioned we're a 501c3 because if you are in a position where you can donate, uh, we would be very grateful. Obviously, the crisis has devastated our schedule this year, uh, and we are trying to do whatever we can to, to keep providing innovative and creative services to the community. So there's a button on the, there should be a link on the, the what we're running here, the, the feed. That goes primarily to PayPal. If you don't have a PayPal account or, or it's, it's difficult for some reason, you can always go to our website, festevents.org, O-R-G, and at the top there's a Donate Now button. It's a drop down and you can put in whatever amount you feel comfortable with. All right, so my favorite color is brown and my favorite food I would say oysters we've been eating a lot of oysters right guys yeah, yes, yes. yeah it would have to be oysters all right so we've got two books tonight and before I tell you about our books we've told you a little bit about us I would like to learn a little bit about you so Let's see, what can we ask them? Let's, let's count to 10 in Spanish. And during that time, think of your favorite book. You don't have to tell anybody, just remember what it is, okay? All right, guys, you ready to roll? Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. All right. I hope you came up with your favorite book. I know you guys have been reading a lot, so you had a lot of, a lot probably up there. But uh, now that you have your favorite book, we're going to make this a little easier. We're going to count to three in English. After we count to three, I want you to yell out your favorite book as loud as you can, and we'll see if we can hear you. Okay? You guys ready? Yes. One, two, two three. three. <laughs> ah, okay, so we got two of the ones that we're going to read tonight, and I've heard some others. Let's see, I, I heard uh, from a York in Norfolk, and her favorite book was Lyle the Crocodile. 
you guys remember that one? No. Yep. No, Thomas doesn't. I love that book. Raleigh loved it. Okay. So York's favorite book was Wild the Crocodile. Uh, did y'all hear any? Oh, that, that, that. I think I heard one. In Suffolk, um, someone named Taryn. Her favorite, she said her favorite book was Casey at Bat. Casey at Bat. That's a baseball book. Wow, cool. Sounds like fun. And I heard one all the way from our nation's capital, Washington, D.C. Baby Eliza, her favorite book is The Pigeon Needs a Bath. Well, if the pigeon was outside today, he got a bath because we got a lot of rain. All right, let's jump on to the fun. Does that sound cool to you guys? Yeah! Fantastic. We're going to start off with Creepy Pair of Underwear. This is Raleigh Blair's favorite book. In interest of time, I'm going to read Creepy Pair of Underwear, and then we're all three going to read the second book. So, with no further ado, Creepy Pair of Underwear, words by Aaron Reynolds, pictures by Peter Brown. Whoa! You look at all the white underwear, there's one bright green pair right there that kind of jumps out at you, right? Yep. A creepy pair of underwear. Jasper Rabbit needed new underwear. On Thursday, Mom took him to the underwear store and grabbed the last three packages of plain white. But as they headed for the checkout, Jasper spotted them. Creepy underwear, so creepy, so comfy, they were glorious. Mom, Mom, can we get these, Jasper pleaded. I think they're a little too creepy, said Mom. They're not creepy, they're cool, said Jasper. I'm not a little bunny anymore, I'm a big rabbit now. I think we've been through this before, right guys? Yeah. Yep. yeah, pretty much every time we go in the store, you guys find something new that you think is the coolest thing in the world, and, and you really want it, and most of the time, Mom and Dad, if we can, we try to get it for you. And that's what's happening here. Jasper really wants the creepy underwear. Mom agreed to buy one pair. That night, Jasper wore his cool new underwear to bed. He's so proud, he's standing on his bed. I know you've probably never stood on a bed, Riley, right? I hope not. Well, 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 wait a minute. You tell me all your secrets. Do you want me to leave the hallway light on, asked Dad. Dad, I'm not a little bunny anymore, said Jasper. I'm a big rabbit now. <coughs> his dad shut the door. And that's when Jasper noticed. The underwear glowed, a ghoulish, greenish glow. Not only that, it's got a crazy face on it. You see, Riley? Really? It's pretty scary. Yes, it is. <laughs> Speaking of scary, we'll take a little break here. Riley, you're older. I'll ask your brother first. <laughs> Thomas, is there anything that scares you? Being in tight spaces. Tight spaces. Hmm. There's a word for that. It's a big word. Claustrophobia. A lot of people don't like being in tight spaces. Raleigh, what about you? Um, I'm not scared of that much, but, well, uh, in fact, a couple months ago, we went down to our farm and we saw a big bear run across the path. Luck luckily, it ran right past us, but it was kind of freaky at the time. It was a little more than freaky, in fact. It made the hair on the back of my neck stand up. Anyways, back to the story here. The underwear glowed, a ghoulish, greenish glow. He closed his eyes. He pulled up the covers. He buried his face in his pillow, but it didn't help. He could still see that ghoulish, greenish glow. Jasper leaped out of bed and put on a pair of plain white. He stuffed the creepy underwear into the bottom of his laundry hamper. He finally fell asleep. 
a good spot probably, the laundry hamper. Mm -hmm. Jasper's asleep, his laundry hamper is glowing. But when he grew up, when he woke up the next day, he was wearing the creepy underwear. There he is in the window, screaming. He's scared. He's like, what in the world? I put those in the hamper. How did they get back on me? Jasper threw them into the garbage can. He was still a big rabbit. He wasn't scared or anything. But he was done with scary underwear. Putting them in the trash. Bad purchase. Bad decision. Too scary. Even though he's a big rabbit. After school, Jasper was doing his homework when he heard it. A scratchy, scraping sound coming from his dresser. He opened the drawer and they were back! Staring at him with that ghoulish, greenish glow. The creepy pair of underwear. They won't leave him alone. He put them in the trash can. Now they're in his drawer. Creepy pair of underwear. He snatched the creepy underwear out of the drawer. He grabbed a big envelope and some stamps. Bye-bye, scary underwear, he said, dropping the package in the mailbox. Looks like he's mailing this to China. That's like halfway around the world. No way he's got to worry about this stuff coming back, right? Yeah. When he opened the front door the next morning, there they were. And were those chopsticks? His creepy pair of underwear had somehow returned from China and it had brought back souvenirs. Chopsticks, you guys like chopsticks? Yep. Whoa, he is completely freaked out. At this point, he's got the door open, the underwear's in the box with the chopsticks, and he's hiding in the wall. He's shaking, he's so scared. What in the world? Jasper grabbed his mom's good sewing scissors. She didn't like him using them. But this was an underwear emergency. This time, the creepy underwear were gone for good. He cut the creepy underwear into a million, bazillion, gazillion pieces. Underwear's gone. At bedtime, he slowly opened his underwear drawer. Nothing, just plain white undies. He searched under his bed. He shook out his lampshades. Whew! There was no sign of creepy underwear. He went into the bathroom to comb his ears. I guess that's what rabbits do. We comb our hair. They comb their ears. That's right. That's right, rabbits crying come their ears. He went into the bathroom. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What does it say, Thomas? They were back! They were back! <laughs> What's the matter with you, Mom asked. You're so jittery lately. Nothing, he yelped. A grown rabbit couldn't be terrified of his underpants. He seized the underwear, he snagged a shovel from the garage, and he rode. He got on his bicycle, right? Went for a little ride. He then stopped pedaling until he reached Creek Hanger Hill. Creek Hanger Hill. Rode all the way to Creek Hanger Hill with the underwear, the creepy pair of underwear. Jasper began to dig. He dug until his hole was dark and deep and 100% underwear proof. He dropped the underwear in. They gleamed from the bottom, that ghoulish, greenish glow. But not for long. He filled the hole in with the dirt. So the underwear has been cut up. Now it's actually been buried in a deep, dark, Hole. So no longer is it glowing that ghoulish greenish glow. When he got home, Jasper crept up to his dresser. They couldn't be in there. There was no way, right? He reached for the handle. 
He peeked in. Nothing. Just plain white. Jasper smiled and turned out the light. No creepy pair of underwear. He did his job. Turned out the light. And what do we have, Riley? Pitch black. Do you like sleeping in the pitch black? No. I have a nightlight. You have a nightlight. That's right. Good answer. There was just one problem. It was really dark in there. Even for a big rabbit. Jasper turned on the light. He looked at his non-glowy pair of plain white, and he knew what he had to do. Put on his bicycle helmet, he grabbed his shovel. The creepy underwear were a little muddy, but they still filled the room with that gentle greenish glow. He went back to the hole, he dug up the underwear, still a little muddy, but thank goodness the glow was there for him. He realized the glow's pretty cool. The next day, Jasper gathered his allowance money and went to the underwear store all by himself, just like a big rabbit. That night, Jasper wasn't scared at all. As he lay down to sleep, he smiled, and so did his underwear, because they had finally found somebody who wasn't scared. Whoa! Of creepy underwear! Pairs everywhere. He loves the glow, and that's like his nightlight. All right. What did you guys think? I liked it. I hope you Good. enjoyed book number one. Raleigh liked it. I knew he was going to like it. Hmm. Hey, Dad, what's that under there? What's under there? <laughs> Is it maybe a creepy pair of underwear? <laughs> That's what was under there. But I don't think Raleigh's afraid of it. He likes that greenish, coolish glow. All right, Tomas, you can come back now. All right, it's circus hat time, folks. Yeah. Why are we putting on our circus hats, Thomas? Because we're reading the circus ship. The circus ship by Chris Van Dusen. This book was Thomas's favorite book. Over here, a little close, guys. Let's get in the camera here. We're all family. We can get within six feet of one another. The Circus Ship by Chris Van Dusen. For Raleigh, happy birthday number three. How about that? Very old. <laughs> <laughs> all right. To begin with, I think we'll let... Raleigh kicked this off, since it's his book after all. Five miles off the coast of Maine, and slightly overdue, a circus ship was steaming south, and fog is thick as dew. You can barely see the ship, the fog's so thick. Sailors do not like thick fog, it's hard to see. On board were 15 animals who traveled to and fro, the next day, it was Boston for another circus show. They're off to Boston. The captain, Mr. Carrington, was honest and sincere. He thought that they should drop the hook and wait for things to clear. But Mr. Payne, the circus boss, was terribly demanding. He stomped up to the house where Captain... Captain Carrington was standing and screamed, Don't stop. Keep going. I've got a show to do. Just let me down to Boston Town tomorrow for a bye too. He is not happy with the captain. He doesn't care that it's foggy. He wants to ship in Boston tomorrow by two. Smashed in 
to a ledge that no one knew was there. Some people call that a shoal. So all the animals, wow. The shattered ship began to tip, then sank without a sound. The splashing, thrashing animals swam round and round and round. Thank goodness these animals can swim. Isn't that neat? Most animals can swim. They are definitely getting tired. Surprised the elephant can swim. <laughs> the captain said to Mr. Payne, Pray tell, what shall we do? We can't just leave them here to drown. We got to save them too. The animals yelled, Mr. Payne. Why, sir, what are you daft? It's me that you should rescue. Pull me into the raft. Now ferry me to safety, sir, before I die of cold. Don't question me, barked Mr. Payne. Just do as you are told. Oh, Mr. Payne is getting uglier by the minute. He said, don't worry about the animals. Get me on the ship. This water's cold. Mr. Payne's not a very kind boss. Through the chilly water all night long. The animals swam on until they reached an island beach just before the dawn. They pulled themselves up on the shore, bedraggled, pulled, and beat, then staggered to the village on weary, wobbly feet. Oh, man. Looks like they all made it. But they are tired. They are extremely tired. They were not saved like Mr. Payne. The people in the neighborhood had just begun to rise, and when they saw those animals, they had to rub their eyes. They thought they saw an elephant, but wait, how could that be? And what's that little monkey doing in the cherry tree? Wow, this town was in for quite the surprise. They woke up, and animals were everywhere. escaped animal problem. That happens sometimes. Normally with dogs, right? Mr. Hood was stacking wood and nearly jumped a mile when he found the alligator sleeping on his pile. And Miss Dottie Daly, who grew daisies by the bunch, discovered that the zebra had been eating them for lunch. And Miss Fanny Feeney found according to the rumors the silly little circus monkey swinging in her bloomers. Things are out of control, out of control. Need to call the animal police. But everything changed quickly, like the turning of the tide. The, the night the abbot's shed caught fire with Emma Rose inside. From high above the abbot's farm, the tiger saw the shed. The sight of smoke and fire triggered something in his head. He jumped through the flames a thousand times back in his circus days, so he ran past all the people and leapt into the blaze. Whoa. Tiger is a hero. He saved the limb of Rose. Or he's trying to. tiger that went into the fire to save her. That's <laughs> why we all love animals. They can do some pretty amazing things. Well, <laughs> the tiger's risky rescue changed everybody
everybody's mind. The animals weren't bothersome. The animals were kind. And so they lived together. Side by side they got along. It didn't seem like anything could possibly go wrong. Alright. The town is harmoniously inhabiting the area together with the animals. Then Little Red, the messenger, came running with the word. Apparently a circus ship had sunk from what he'd heard. The animals are from that boat. They swam in from the bay. The greedy owner wants them back. He'll be here any day. So the people called a meeting, and they quickly hatched a plan. No animal that came ashore would sail off with that man. How about that? The town is coming to the rescue of the animals because the animal came to the rescue of them. Mr. Payne, he's on a mission to find his animals, to get them back in his circus. Now this page personally is my favorite because all the animals, well, you'll see when <laughs> you see the picture. He hiked until he came into the center of town. His face was red, he scratched his head. He stood there with a frown. Mr. Payne looked high and low, low but still he couldn't see. The 15 circus animals of his menagerie. Menagerie. Whoa, he can't find the animals. Run a little tight on time, so we're not going to... This is the coolest page, like Riley said. The animals are hiding in plain sight. And I'm just going to show you one, all right? Oh, Mr. Sweet. Bear right there on the, on, the, on the cycle. Can I show them one? Yeah, you can show them one, sure. I think we've got time for that. And the monkey and the baby stroller. Yeah. Snake. Um, and one for me. One of the hardest is probably the alligator in the on the stones. Alligator right there. Absolutely. <laughs> he ran around the alleyways. He searched the village square. He even checked the chicken coop. His animals weren't there. Mr. Payne was tuckered out. His heavy chest was heaving. Then Little Red stepped up and said, I think your boat is leaving. Off ran, he ran off in a fit of rage. His ship was leaving sight, so he jumped into a rowboat, and he rowed with all his might. All right, Mr. Payne. Having to work to get to his boat. No animals with him. And from that day, they like to say their lives were free of pain. It was a happy, peaceful place upon that isle in Maine. Everyone's happy. The end. I think everybody did a great job, and we must thank our camera woman. Uh, Chris is Margaret Blair. All right. And there's one thing, Margaret. Oh, do you want to tell the kids some of the things that Fest Events does? Oh yeah. Well, we mentioned earlier, I believe. I, I must have. I'm sorry, but the children may not be too familiar with Fest Events and what exactly we do. You may have gone to some of our festivals. Uh, Harbor Fest, which is in June, normally. Uh, the 4th of July, the fireworks from the 4th of July, we put those on. Oh, there's so many. Uh, can you guys think of one that I might be forgetting? Virginia's yes. Children's Festival! <laughs> That's October 3rd this year. That's a one-day festival for you children. And uh, specifically for the kids, it's awesome. Moms and dads, put it on your calendar. And we thank you for your time. And uh, we hope to see you soon. Be safe. Bye.